Hello friends, welcome to today's lecture. Today we will learn about statistical functions. When working with Excel as a data analyst, you will encounter broadly four different types of data. Those are numerical values, string values, date time values, and Boolean values, which is true and false. Statistical functions are those that perform operations on numerical values. There are several different statistical functions available in Excel. In this course, we will be covering some of the most important and the common ones. So without further ado, let's start with rounding functions. So I have a workbook open on my screen, which has a couple of examples that will help us understand the rounding functions. I'm assuming we all have some, or to some extent, a little bit of a mathematics background. Therefore, without explaining the rounding, we'll jump right into how the rounding functions work in Excel. Let's take an example of this number, 16.6667, and let's play around with this number. Uh, let's just say that we want to round this number down to two decimal places. For that, I will use the round function, which takes in two arguments. It's asking for the number that we round, that we want the rounding function to work on, and then it's asking for the number of digits. So I want to round it down to two digits. I'll pass in two and I'll close the parentheses, and it will give us 16.67. Let's just say that we want to round this number up or round this number down to two decimal places. It's already rounding up because the last number was greater than five, but I'll again just do it over here. So I'll use the round up function. I'll pass in the same number and pass in two digits. So it gives us the same answer. And if I want to round it down, I'll, I'll again pass in the same number, round it down to two digits, and we all know it's going to give us 16.66. Now let's just say that we want to convert this number into an integer. I can do that as well via the int formula. We can call it int as well. We just need to pass in one argument, that is the number, and it will give us the integer. Moving on, let's say we want to find the next even number after this number. For that as well, we have a function in Excel called even. If you pass in this number, it will give us the next available even number, which will be 18 in this example. And similarly, if you want the next available odd number, we'll get 17 if we pass on this number. Now, if you have some experience with Excel, you might already be aware that you can actually round this number down to two decimal places or as many decimal places as you want by using some formatting options. Let me just show you. So I'll add a couple of rows. And th then if I select the cell, if I go to the Home tab, we have an option here to decrease decimal. If I click on it, it is actually doing what the round function is also doing for us. So now the question arises that if we have this formatting function available so conveniently, then why do we need the rounding functions at all? And what is the use case for the rounding functions anyway? Let's, under let's understand this by way of an example. I have an example set up over here. Let's just say that we have these six numbers. Uh, of course, there are lots of decimal places in these numbers. Let's format them down to two decimal. I'll just copy them again over here, and I'll format them down to two decimal places. And in the next column, I will use the round function to round them down to two decimal places. Now they actually both look alike. So what's the difference? In order to see the difference, I'll again go back and open these two columns to let's say four or five decimal places. I'll go to the Home tab and I'll click the button for Increase Decimal. So I hope it now clarifies how these two approaches are different. When you use the formatting, it actually rounds the number down only visually. Deep down inside, the original number is still there. Whereas when you use the round function, it actually changes the number when it rounds it down to two decimal places. So now that we understand what's the difference, what does it mean for us? Should we be using formatting option to round the numbers down or should we use the round function? It actually depends on the use case. Definitely the purpose of rounding the numbers down is to ensure that our reports do not have numbers like these because we want to make our reports presentable. If you're planning to use these numbers for some further calculations, then you might want to format your numbers down to two decimal places. Because if your calculation use these numbers, 
instead of these numbers, then the answers to those calculations might be different from expectation. On the other hand, if the purpose of rounding the numbers down is to prepare the numbers to be presented as a summary or as a final report, then using the rounding function might be good as well. Also, later on in the course, when we will learn about the text functions, for example, concatenate text join, you will see that using the round function might be the only option in, to use in some cases. Now, before we move on to the next part of the lecture, I wanted to emphasize one more thing about this function. So we saw that when we use the round function to round some number down to two decimal places, it actually changes the number entirely when it's rounding it down. This does not just apply to the round function. It applies to all the functions that we covered here. So let me just show you by way of an example. If I open the decimal places, that is increase the decimal places for these numbers, you will see that the nature of all of these numbers have changed. All these numbers were derived from a number of 16.6667. Uh, however, now the nature of all these numbers have changed. So keep in mind when using rounding or any of these functions in your reports. As the next step, we will learn about the ceiling and the floor function. I'll bring up a new Excel worksheet where I have, again, a couple of examples that will help us learn. So broadly speaking, the ceiling num function rounds the number up to a nearest multiple of a certain number, and that certain number will be provided by us. To understand it further, let's solve this example. Consider the following number, 18.33. Let's say that I want to round it up to the nearest multiple of five. Technically speaking, I want to see 18.5 here. To do that, we can use the ceiling function, which takes in two arguments. The first argument is of course the number that we want to do the rounding operation on. So I will pass in this number. The second argument is the significance. Significance argument specifies the multiple to which you want to round to. In this case, we want to round it to 0.5. And for now, I'll keep the mode argument empty. It's anyway optional. And it, it, it gives us 18.5. Let's say I want to round it down to the nearest multiple of 5. I'll use the floor function. And the arguments are same. We have number, its significance, and the last argument is mode, which I'm keeping empty for the time being. Let's talk about the mode argument. The mode argument is optional and it only applies for negative numbers. In case of negative numbers, it controls whether a number is rounded towards or away from zero. So let's just take an example. I'll make it minus 18.3. Right now it gives me minus 18 when I'm rounding it up. However, if I pass in minus one here, it will round it up to minus 18.5. Similarly, if I minus pass minus one over here, it will round it towards the zero. So now what, what is the purpose of these functions? One use case of these functions could be in, in, in the pricing scenario. Let's say that you have the following data set. We have three products, table, chair, and shelf. This is the cost to produce each of the product. This is our profit markup. And this comes out to be the final price, which is basically the sum of the cost to produce and the profit markup. Now, in some cases, we might not want to set these kind of prices because 20.74 is, is not really a price point. We might want to set the price in a way that it rounds to the nearest 50 cents. So in that case, I can use either the ceiling or the floor function. Let's just say that I want to charge up to nearest 50 cents uh, and I want to round it up. So in that case, I will use ceiling function and I'll specify the significance of 0 0.5. So that will give me a price of uh, 21 or 17.50. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. In the next one, we will learn about the sum, count, and average functions. And I hope to see you there. Thank you.